Welcome back to the Tool Crib. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about how to transport cylinders like this. So this is just a regular oxygen cylinder that you use on an oxygen acetylene torch. Uh, I've had to do this a lot in the past, uh, but since I've gone to plasma cutters, I don't transport these bottles quite as often as I used to. But here working in the shop, I have an oxygen acetylene torch set up, and I also have my CO2 or argon, uh, depending on the weld process, for the MIG welders as well. So uh, I transport these a little bit more often than what I have in recent years. Now, before I used to have some saddles that I had made for doing this type of uh, job. So what I've got here is just a standard uh, oxygen tank. And I've got a couple of two inch heavy duty straps strapped onto this to bring it down to the bed of the truck. Now I've done this to illustrate the fact that though this looks like it's fairly secure, it really isn't because being on a slick surface of the bed uh, and then the weight of the tank itself, you can actually move this around quite a little bit. And if you're in stop and go traffic, you hit the brakes too hard, this bottle can actually slip out from underneath of those straps just because of the way they're routed. So. What we're going to be doing today is I'm going to make a couple of new saddles with some 2x6 material. That way we'll have a rest for the bottle to sit on. And then I'll show you how to reroute these straps in order to make this tie down a lot more secure so that this bottle will not move on you when you are transporting it back and forth to the welding supply store. So with that, let's get started. Okay, now that I have these boards cut to length, what I want to do is I want to 45 about half the edge on either side of these boards. Okay, now that I've got uh, these boards beveled the way I want, now I can take each one of these and cut them in half, and then when we flip them around, that'll give us a 45 edge that we'll use to set up against those bottles, but we have to screw that down to a base, but we're going to have to determine the length of that first. Let's take it to the bottle, that way we can determine how long we want our base. So now that we've got the two halves cut and we've got it rested up against the bottle, now we can just measure outside to outside to determine the length that we need our base to be. In our case, it's just a little over 17 inches at 17 and a 16th. Okay, now that we've got our base cut to the proper length, now I'm gonna just go pre-drill four screw holes for each one of these and using two and a half inch screws, I'll screw these parts down to the base. Uh, for each one of these and then we'll have our two saddles made. Okay, now we've got our two saddles made and our bottle resting on top of them. That provides uh, three contact points here at the very bottom and on this side as well. Now, this has greatly increased the friction. Instead of having the bottle directly on the bed where it's steel against steel, that wood actually helps to make it a lot more grippy. And uh, it really aids us in preventing that bottle from wanting to shift around. And now we've got it elevated about an inch and a half. I'm gonna show you how to route the straps so that you can make this a very, very secure tie down. Okay, now we've got our strap run underneath the bottle and in order to secure this, we're gonna bring each end of the strap up and we're gonna trap it with this D shackle. Now in the past, I used uh, just standard shackles, but I found that these D shackles with their straight edges put a lot less stress onto the strap and so when we go to tighten this down, you'll see that it doesn't really uh, with, the, with the standard shackle, it kind of bellies out here, and so it just it doesn't hold the strap quite as well as uh, the straight edge of this one does. So what we want to do is we want to take the shackle apart. We want to bring up our first edge here, loop it in, and we'll kind of kind of wrap this one. Let me get a little bit more slack here. There we go. 
We want to kind of route this so that it's right on the top of the bottle, and then we'll pull the other side up. Route that in, and then we will put the shackle pin back in, tighten it up. And we want to kind of make sure that it's off-centered this way just slightly so that when we pull that it will tighten down correctly. So let me tighten it up. <clears throat> now with just one shackle or one strap on there, it is a lot more secure than where it was before with two straps on it. I'm going to go ahead and set the other one on there to make it even more secure. Okay, now that we've got uh, our saddles in place and we've got our straps routed with our D shackles, this load has become very, very secure. In fact, I can shift this whole thing and it moves the truck instead of moving the load. So with the added friction with the uh, saddles, it keeps it from moving side to side. The way we routed around and using the D rings or the D shackles, it is both pulling it together and pulling it down at the same time. And so with the two straps on there, there is no lateral movement either. So this has turned what is a little bit of a cumbersome load into a very, very secure load. So this is how I transport all types of gauss cylinders. My name is Ben, you've been watching the Texas Tool Crib. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.